I've got about 15 minutes, I'm going to do a short recap. Um, I'm going to make this super quick. Um, so my name's Ben. Uh, tonight I want to talk about kind of a side project that I've built in production with a paying customer the last year. Um, a couple of tools that I've used to do it. Um, has anyone used Algolia before? Or know what it is? Awesome. It's a best way to rehack an news. Awesome. That's Good. Yes. I like it. <laughs> and Firebase. Everyone's hacked on that maybe before. Yeah? yeah. Cool. Um, so a bit of background on myself. Uh, and also if you want the slides, um, you can go to that link. I'll give them to you afterwards, whatever. Um, I'm a product manager at an enterprise learning management software called Learnt. Um, as a part of my role, I get to obviously develop, but I also am the product manager. So. Um, it means that I'm not good at both things. Really. <laughs> um, so, a while ago I had a task, this is not in the company I work for, this is the side project that I'm going to talk about tonight, where they have a, it's actually a Brisbane based company called McNab. Um, they have a huge amount of inventory internally that they rent out internally. Um, one of the challenges was getting everyone to rent that equipment out rather than go to external um, providers of equipment. Sort of business case, they wanted all of the, um, their staff to be able to rent out equipment internally. So we built a platform for them to do that. One of the requirements recently, and this is what I want to do my talk because I'm pretty excited about what Algolia has been able to do. Um, one of the requirements was they said, well, we've got administrative pieces of equipment that we don't want everyone to be able to look up in their search. And so that got me thinking about permissioned or secure search. Um, and so I didn't know how to do this up until about a month ago. And so this is my path on implementing uh, secure search. Um, so Algolia itself, and I'll, I'll talk you through some of the technologies we've used. Um, the solution was to use, and by the way, our stack is using Firebase Firestore, um, which is a NoSQL high-scale database from Google. Um, and the use of Algolia. And you say, well, you've got a NoSQL database, why can't you just look up and search on your NoSQL database uh, for your users? And the answer is that um, the level of querying that I have capability over in Firestore is not good enough relative to something like Algolia. Now, what does Algolia do? It's, it's kind of like a super high scale, real time, Google quick kind of search engine. And it allows me to do querying not only on every field in the database, but also if I get uh, search wrong. So if I get three out of five letters correct, um, it will still give me search results. So it's got a few little smarts like that in there. And that's why I've used it, because I see I use uh, a tracking tool called Full Story, and I record and look at a lot of sessions that the users do. They obviously misspell equipment names all the time. But the user experience to have that as good as possible is to allow for that. So um, the implementation that I want to run through really quickly was I use Firebase functions or Google Cloud functions uh, with Firestore listeners. So basically what that allows us to do is any time I write to the Firestore database, that will then uh, trigger a cloud function to do an action for me. So if I add a new piece of equipment into the collection, that will then replicate that into our goal form. The second part was using full, full text um, with Algolia. So um, yes, we can have a collection of Algolia pieces of equipment. Um, but on top of that, I want to say, well, it's just me. I'm only a regular user. I only get access to a certain set, subset of equipment. So we're going to walk through how we get, we get that working as well. Um, the third part was more of a bonus was if I wanted to re-index every day, I can actually set up schedules within Firebase. So, a bit of a snapshot, Cloud Functions is serverless functions, very similar to AWS Lambda. Uh, Firestore, think about it like Mongo, and Algolia, our hosted full text search engine. So, the first part was the listener. Setting up the listener on the Firestore database, making sure that every time any transaction happened on the Firestore database, that also happened over at Algolia to keep everything in sync. So the way we do, it, do that with um, Cloud Functions is we have what's called an on-write method. And so it's always listening to a collection called the equipment collection. And when everything gets written to the database, I'll do some very simple logic in, as it's pretty bad JavaScript, 
understanding whether or not it's uh, an update, a delete, or a create method. Knowing that, I can then go and call a write to Algolia method, and all that does is just says, look, I want you to add this object because I know you're trying to create something. I want you to update it, do a save object method to Algolia, and likewise delete the object because it's not there anymore. So in, in Firebase terms, I can add a document into the collection and a couple of seconds or half a second later, that will be replicated into my Algolia, what's called index, that I call the collection, I call it index. This is a snapshot of what Cloud Functions looks like. So this is a list of all of the functions that I have built um, into, the, into the application. Um, and one of those is called Sync to Algolia. So that's a little bit of a snapshot of what you see in Firebase. Um, the logging is reasonably OK. Um, so I'm able to, to get logs and, and see the sync happen. So I'd probably rather just show it happen rather than talk about it, because it's a lot more fun, I suppose. So if I wanted to add a new piece of equipment, we could load this up. Imagery, maybe. Uh, do I have an image? I probably should have had an image on my desktop, but I don't. Um, let's lift and chains. We'll add that in. Let's do it expectantly. I'll just refresh. It should work. Let's just add that. Let's just go with the two pieces of equipment we've already got. Yeah, well, it's doing that. Yeah, sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> On adding a piece of equipment in. Ben, the sorry, I think the mic's turned off. Can't hear you back. Okay. No, no, we'll get I'll just talk out about that. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. when we add a piece of equipment into Cloud Firestore, thanks, cheers. I'm able to, in my functions listing, I can see a list of all of the functions that I have available. And so one of those was called uh, Sync Equipment to Algolia. So I can go and look at those logs. Now, if I wanted more detailed logs, I can go to Stackdriver within Google Cloud. Um, for right now, this is a, sufficient for me to be able to understand what's going on. So I can see in here um, that I've added uh, a piece of equipment and it's synced successfully with Algolia. I can then go into the Algolia Equipment Index and I can see that I've got a couple of pieces of equipment. Now the really important part, the next part, is the secure search piece. So we know we're being able to sync our databases together, but how do we actually make it that I only get to see a subset of those documents? So the way that Algolia deals with that is by adding a kind of a, a restricted attribute on each of the documents that I want to have access to. And so in my case, I'm going to use something called underscore tags. Usually, you, you could call it viewable by. Um, and that's just simply an array of IDs. As long as my user ID is inside of that array of, uh, array of strings, then it's going to show up for me. And we think, well, that's going to run into limitations pretty quickly, because if you've got thousands of users, you can't be packing thousands of users in a single array. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, though, it's, it's a relatively low scale implementation. Um, I think off the top of my head, it, it's 20 kilobytes that uh, Algolia has on their, like their first paid plan, and that'll get you about 5,000 users. So it's, it's enough to say, well, here's, here's access for 5,000 different people for the same object. Um, so what we get to do here, and I'll run, I won't labor the code here, but what this is going to do is when I log in, this will give me a, a secure search API key 
different to the normal search API key that I might use for Algolia generally. Um, and this is personalized to me. So for every single piece of equipment or every single collection item across all of the indexes, it knows about me and my uh, user ID. So it's going to send back to me a special key that only I can use. So the nice part about it then is I can look up with just um, the key that I want, so the secure search API key. Traditionally, I might use the Algolia search only API, API key, um, but because it's now specific to me, that will stop uh, all of the other objects getting seen. So the example here then is I've got two pieces of equipment. One is called, now this is relatively small, I might just zoom in a bit. So one piece of equipment here, it's called admin lifting chains. Um, and you can see here, there's, we don't have any underscore tags here. So I've set it up that only administrators have full access for the full API. But we have another one here just called lifting chains. And this one here has an underscore tags. That happens to be my user ID. So the fact that it has my user ID on it, that will generate a secure API key. Now when I go to search in the application, when I search chains, it's only going to give me the results of just the, the object that I have access on. I can't see the administrative chains. So really useful in being able to create, and in particular for search experiences where you don't want users uh, to see everything, but you really still want to, to give them that full text search experience, this is how our goal we've been able to do it. So yeah, I've been pretty excited to be able to implement this. So that's that's kind of it on the secure search and the Firestore listeners piece. The final piece that is really new to Firestore, the uh, Firebase that I've just implemented in a couple of other projects is PubSub um, scheduling. So the ability to um, effectively just add cron jobs straight from Firebase functions. Um, and that's been really useful, um, just the, the, the simplicity of the syntax as well. They've got uh, what looks like English, um, which is pretty cool. So um, they've got a special syntax, so they use the word every with an integer and with a time period. Um, so every two minutes, for example, uh, those sorts of things work here instead of the traditional cron syntax. Um, so it's been, it's been cool. Um, so that um, being Firebase, it adds it into a Google Cloud project as well. So you can go and run those functions uh, or run those cron jobs as well um, manually whenever you want. Um, so it's a really useful tool. Um, so that was a bit of an overview of, kind of my journey into being able to do secure search um, with tools that I think are really leading, leading the industry. Um, I've written a couple of other blogs previously, so if you're more interested in going a little bit further into Algolia, uh, there's a blog there, you can click these links. Um, and if you're looking for more understanding of how to implement such as third, third party APIs, such as Google Cloud Vision API, I've written a small blog that interacts with both Firestore and Firebase functions. Um, but if you've got any other questions, I'm more than happy to answer them, but thanks for listening. Uh, okay, I would just like to add an excellent slide to me. I really like the two columns there. Um, and yeah, what he said about the thing, these things leading the way, they're pretty right. Like back when I was at uni, he made an app with um, Ionic, which was like an Angular bootstrap, um, and Firebase for the hosting. And I had no idea how to JavaScript, and Firebase made it really easy. Yeah. And then I was asked to demo it when I got a job, and I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to upgrade it from Ionic 1 to 2, and I was like, I gave up. I just got it in Ionic 1, because then Ionic 1 to 2 meant Angular 1 to 2. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, questions? Do you have any questions? Any questions for yourself? Who likes Firebase? Oh, there you go. I like Firebase. So this works by storing the data on Algolia's hardware in their cloud. That's right, yeah. yeah. And you're querying it. Full replication, yeah. 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 yeah.